5.6 rates of change in rational functions. So let's recall average rate of change, the change in the quantity represented by the dependent variable, which is uh, delta y, divided by the corresponding change with the independent variable, which is delta x, right? So over some interval. So it is equal to the slope of the secant line. Again, a secant line is going through two points. So a rock average rate of change is delta y over delta x. Okay, so the change in y, the change in f at x over x. Now, as a recall, the instantaneous rate of change is in, at exactly one point, okay, on the curve, y equals f at x. So what we do is we choose some h that's infinitely small, let's call it 0 0.01, and we treat this as a tangent line. And again, it's delta y over delta x with the difference in the points being h. Okay, so example one. Determine the average rate of change to the graph f at x equals x over x plus 3 on the interval 5 to 7. Okay, so we want to find f at 5. So we sub in 5 over 5 plus 3, which is 5 over 8. And then we want to find f at 7, which is 7 over 7 plus 3, which is 7 over 10. And then we just find the average rate of change. So we have a point here, 5 comma 5 over 8, and 7 comma 7 over 10. So we're going to find a slope between these. So we'll do 7 over 10 minus 5 over 8 over 7 minus 5. So 7 over 10 minus 5 over 8, I get 3 over 40. And if your calculator is good, you can just do this all in your calculator. I get 3 over 80, which, I mean, as a decimal, this is 0 0.0375. Okay, there's no units here, so I'm not going to worry about the units. B, estimate the slope of the tangent to the graph f at x equals x over x plus 3 at the point where x equals negative 5. And we're going to use h equals 0 0.001. Okay, so we, let's do negative 5 minus 0 0.001, and we get negative 5.001. So um, let's solve for f at negative 5, and then we're going to solve for f at negative 5 decimal 0, 0, 001. Okay, so negative 5 over negative 5 plus 3 is negative 5 over negative 2. So we can just simplify the signs uh, as 5 over 2. Now, negative 5.001 over negative 5.001 plus 3 is... Okay, so this is going to be negative 5.001 over negative 2.001, which is, I get 2.499, and I just go 2, 5. Okay, so we have the point negative 5 over, or comma, and then 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. Okay, then we have negative 5.001. And then 2.49925. So the instantaneous rate of change is going to be, let's do, let's do this one first. So 2.5 minus 2.49925 over negative 5 minus bracket negative 5.001. Okay, so we get 0 0.00075 over 0 0.001, right? That's h. And then divided by 
0.00075 divided by 0 0.001, I get 0.75. C, why can there not be a tangent line where x equals negative 3? Okay, so if you actually look at x equals negative 3, there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So the graph, I'm just fitting this in, is not defined at that point. Okay, so marginal revenue. This is the instantaneous rate of change at a point on the revenue function. Okay, and it's estimated additional revenue for selling one more item. That's like the actual definition of what that means. Okay, we could be given the demand equation, which is the quantity of an item that consumers will or sorry, are willing to buy at each price point. And revenue equation. So the revenue it equals number of items sold times the price. In other words, XPX. Okay. So the demand equation for a toothbrush is, here we go, P at X equals 5 over 2 plus X. Where X is the number of toothbrushes sold in thousands and p is the price in dollars determine the marginal revenue when 1500 toothbrushes are sold so marginal revenue it's the instantaneous rate of change at a point on the revenue function so first we need to find the revenue function okay so revenue is x times p at x so this is x times 5 over 2 plus x. In other words, 5x over 2 plus x. This is our revenue function. Now, it gives us x equals 1500. Okay, let's go ahead and let's use centered intervals around 1.5. Sorry, x will not equal 1500 because that's in, it's in thousands. So x is going to be the 1.5, which is given here anyways. And centered intervals means that we're going to take x and we're going to add h to it. And we're going to take x and we're going to subtract h from it. And we're going to use these two values for our... Um, for our interval. Okay, so we're going to use the values 1.501 and 1.499. So we're going to go ahead and solve for the revenue function at 1.501, and we're going to solve for the revenue function at 1.499. And then we're going to find the rate of change. So we're going to do 5 times 1.501 over 2 plus 1.501. So we get 7 decimal 505 over 3.501. And I get 2.1. Four, three, six, seven. Let's run that many decimals. That's fine. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. Five times 1.499 over two plus 1.499. Okay. So I get 7.495 over 3.499. Okay, and we get 2.14204. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, we have two points 1.501, 2.14367, and 1.499, comma, 2.14204. Okay, I'm going to do this one minus this one because 1.5 is bigger and I like to deal with a, a positive number in the denominator. So 2.14367 
minus 2.14204 over 1.501 minus 1.499. Right? The denominator is obviously going to be double H. So like this is going to be like 2H because we went down one you uh like H and then we went up H. 2.14204. 0 decimal 00163. Okay, so I get 0 0.815. And that is measured in Thousands of toothbrushes, no, P. P is the price, X is the number of toothbrushes sold, and the marginal revenue is additional revenue from selling one more item. Okay, so therefore, additional revenue for selling one more toothbrush is $0.815 per toothbrush. Okay, it's round to two. That makes more sense. 82 cents. Example three, the snowshoe hare population in a newly created conservation area can be predicted over time by this model. Okay, P represents the population size and T is the time in years since opening the conservation area. Determine when the hare population will increase the most rapidly. So this is what we want to find. Okay, by using the graph below and estimate the instantaneous rate of change. And then we're going to use following intervals as just an example. Okay, so taking a look here, what we want to do is we want to kind of like Start drawing a, a couple tangent lines, okay? And see which one is going to be the most steep, right? The steepest. I would say probably around here is going to be the steepest. Let's see. Maybe around two is going to be the steepest. So let's find P at two. And the following interval would be x plus h, which is 2 plus 0 0.001, right? They said eight, use h as 0 0.001, so 2.001, okay? So we're then going to find p at 2.001, and then we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change between those. So p at 2, 50 plus 2,500. 2 squared over 25 plus 2. Okay, so 2,500 times 4. So we get 10,050 for the numerator and 27 uh, for the denominator, in which we get 372.222, and so on. Okay, 2.001. Let's do 50 plus 2,500, 2.001 squared over 25 plus 2.001. So I get 10060.0025 over, that would be 27001. So I get 372.5788, let's round up to nine. One, two, three, I put three decimals. Okay, let's go three decimals. So let's round that to the nine, okay? So in other words, we have the point two comma 372.222, and then we have the point 2.001 comma 372.579. Now let's find the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so I'm going to go this, uh, the second point minus the first point, because in the denominator, I want to get a positive H value. Okay, so I get 372.579 minus 372.222. So I get zero decimal. 
357, which gives us an instantaneous rate of change of 